Okay, what's up everybody? This is gonna moonlight as the podcast because I got home late. Dakota couldn't do the podcast. So for those watching on YouTube, stick around and you're gonna get my thoughts on Nate Diaz versus Jake Paul for as little as much as this fight as I consumed. It was basically an away game for me, so you're getting that content plus the show box card. Let's groove out to the groovy intro and let's get into it. Okay, so Nate Diaz loses to Jake Paul. It's a pure spectacle fight. It looked like a classic count your money before it was over fight. Nate Diaz showed some level of interest, but it it looked as though Nate Diaz was kind of there for the check, and he was there to just keep his brand strong. Like, he's building an online digital empire. Fighting Jake Paul introduces him to a new group of people jake paul can further his credibility in boxing by beating nate diaz a reputable fighter of 20 plus years they both kind of needed something from each other and they could make money in the process of doing it so the fight served a purpose for that what i saw was both of them trying to come away with victories nate diaz came away showing his bravado and toughness and at times mocking uh jake paul doing kind of playing the hits that you would expect him to do jake paul once again showing a little bit of something but he's also looking the part of a guy that never had an amateur boxing career and is strategically fighting older mma fighters who probably shouldn't be fighting him at this point i think that jake paul is taking interesting fights for where he's at in this sport but it's it's going to be like the way he's treated his social media career He's going to always try to punch up and put himself in advantageous positions where he has more to gain and less to lose. That was the case with this Nate Diaz fight. Nate Diaz is a veteran, a legend of the sport of MMA. And then Jake Paul, though he's taking the sport of boxing very serious, Nate has everything to lose. They've circled around names like KSI and Conor McGregor. The problem with this fight was twofold. It came after a really important historical fight with Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford that we're going to talk about for years on end. That alone made this fight just mean even less because it was just so unimportant in the big scheme of things. And that's going to just always hurt because this fight, I'm going to probably forget, even happened in two years. And this was on pay-per-view And it spoke to certain audiences, right? You got UFC MMA fans and Nate Diaz. They'll tune in. Can he beat the YouTube guy? The YouTube guy, can he beat um, this tough guy who has the brazado? They got hats that say protect the hood and all this stuff. They're the tough guys. They're always frowning. It was a nerd versus a tough guy. That's what the fight came down to. And, you know, the nerd won. And it is what it is. And... I think that it, it's just for someone tuning in to see a spectacle, it was a spectacle. It just wasn't world-class boxing. So for me, it's just not as interesting, and I'm not the person it speaks to. It's playing to the early, the late aughts, early 2010s, this divide kind of macho, listen here, brother. It's kind of like Donald Trump speech, like, you need to listen to us because UFC is making the greatest fights and boxing's the worst. So now Jake Paul is kind of preying upon that that mantra that kind of helped UFC become so vibrant and expand so much in the in the marketplace was like boxing's the worst. He's preying upon old MMA legends and beating them and kind of just going rubbing it in the face of 30 something people that grew up with the belief that these MMA fighters were vastly superior to boxers it's preying on the vulnerabilities of certain fans and it will continue to happen i still think Jake Paul for the most part is a good because he's committed to the sport and he's putting on people like Shadeja Green who was in a good contest against Olivia Curry on the undercard as well as putting on Ashton Silva a very talented fighter who stopped William Silva in four rounds this is a good commitment to the sport. Can I break down his fights? No, and I don't think anyone that's his fan wants me to break down his fight. Jake Paul's fights are spectacle, and there's nothing wrong with his fights being spectacle. Let's keep it moving. Amanda Serrano fought Heather Hardy. The point of this fight, you heard it in the press conference, Amanda Serrano wanted to return the favor. Heather Hardy allowed Amanda Serrano to be a unified, undisputed champion. 
So she wanted to get her a six-figure payday on the way out the door. I think it was naive if anyone thought that this fight was going to be competitive. There was always a skill set disadvantage, and now Heather Hardy's later into her career. This is probably her last fight. This was just kind of a thank you. I think Amanda was trying to stop her. She just couldn't stop her. Heather was too tough. Heather took a heck of a beating. But Heather's a pioneer, and she got paid, which is important. So that occurred on this. The two most interesting fights on this card probably will go unnoticed. Alan Sanchez is now on this crazy two-fight win streak that's really incredible when he beat Angel Beltran. Alan Sanchez is a fringe contender that when uh, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford leave the welterweight division, Alan Sanchez becomes a very viable world champion type contender who could really compete at the highest level of this sport. Now you add to it... um, you know, that he has two big wins. He he beat Saul Bustos, a highly touted club show fighter, and then he followed that up with um, a very good win over Angel Beltran, who just beat Louis Colazzo. Solid, tough guy. He's got a couple of upsets wins. Sanchez, tough guy from my area. Love to see it. And Nate Diaz giving him an opportunity. Best performance of the night was obviously Kevin Newman. Kevin looked the part that people had always touted him to be. He looked like a baby Roy Jones in there. And he fought a very good fighter in Kalisto Kilo, the kid Madeira. It was a very evenly comp- competed bout, but Kevin used his athleticism and ring intelligence to win this fight. And I thought, I wish that coming out of this weekend, I wish the conversation would be more about the Kevin Newmans and the Alan Sanchez rather than where is the sport going with Jake Paul competing at this level. Sadly, that's probably not going to be what our big takeaway. But I wish it was because Kevin Newman and Alan Sanchez are two guys that have some losses on their record, fought real early compared to where they are experience wise compared to some of these other guys. They're really good fighters, and I wish that they could get these big opportunities that they really are in line for. So I wish that they get more exposure and more talking, but let's be honest, people just kind of watch the top two fights on these cards. People don't watch the developmental talent, but I see it. Congratulations, Kevin. Congratulations, Alan Sanchez. And on a deeper level, Angel Beltran, Kalisto, Kilo, Kid Madera, you put it on the line, and you guys were warriors too. These fights should have gotten more attention. Speaking of more attention, Jordan White. Jordan White got an absolute um, knockout of the year contender, knocked out a guy in the main event of Showbox, Bill Haney there. First round knockout, arguably losing the first round, catches the guy, lays him out flat. You could have counted to about 40 or 50, and the guy wouldn't have gotten up. Uh, Jordan White announced himself on the scene, and I think that that's a very... 130 is a division that's needing someone to shake it up, and maybe Jordan White will fill that mold of the guy that will shake this division up. Then we entered the co-main event, a fight I'd been telling you I was really excited about, Paul Kroll versus Guido Scram. Very, very good fight. I think Paul Kroll is really turning a corner as a fighter. The level of maturity, it seems like he's very composed in the ring. Rasheem Jefferson Sr. as his coach. That's a very high-level coach. Paul Kroll gets all the respect from all the Philly fighters, and I hope Paul gets his moment. At the same time, Guido Scram screams of a world title contender. He screams of being a Samson boxer that will upset someone in the future. It's just Guido couldn't quite get the job done. A draw was the result here, and it's a very fair result. I think we should make this a 10-rounder, do the rematch, show box, and maybe that can elevate someone into a main event opportunity on a bigger platform. But both of these guys deserve opportunities, and I think they will get opportunities in the future. That was this weekend's action. Be sure to comment on the video, like the video, and subscribe and all that if you enjoy this.